listening to For a More Radio, your power station with powerful teachings from the Word of God. Hello, welcome to the Transformational Ministry. I am Jackie. And I am Lori. And thank you guys for tuning in today, whether you're listening live or listening on demand. Thank you for listening. So today we're going to be talking about sound doctrine versus itching ear. Well, I don't want to call it, uh, we're going to say sound doctrine teachers versus itching ear teachers. We're going to just kind of look at that. Um, I believe you're going to be able to listen to more of this in depth on Wednesday at 7 p.m. as Overseer Evans cover a little bit more of this subject um, in depth. So he's going to, you know, give you more insight on this. But this is a very sobering uh, topic to me. So first of all, hello. Good afternoon, doctor. How you doing? I'm doing good. Good, good, and good. All right. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. Amen. Thank God. I'm doing good uh. too. I'm doing good too. So let's talk for a minute. We're going to be getting into this. So, um, I never realized how many. I only because I never thought about it. And when you think of an obvious charlatan, someone that's out there duping the people, you know, you 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 kind of can go ah. And you compare yourselves and say, well, that's not me. But there's probably more preachers and teachers out there that are not sound in what they're teaching. And they may not necessarily be doing what they're doing purposely trying to get over or trying to deceive someone. But at the end of the day, that's exactly what's what's happening. Okay? So... Uh, I'm going to read the scripture in the scriptures in 2 Timothy chapter 4. We're going to read that and we'll go from there. How we, you know, through the scripture got led to this particular subject. Okay. Did you have something before? Uh, 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 if, you, if you think about it, uh, now, the people that's outside, mm-hmm. like you and I was outside of the church. Uh, the Christ, we didn't know Him, mm-hmm. and we lived our lives uh, the way we wanted to live it. And people doing that even today. Mm-hmm. If the, the strategy is, why would you worry about them, strategy wise? Mm-hmm. Okay, why why would you attack them? But the attack would be on the opposing force that threaten your kingdom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, you know the person, the power, of the air. That's the, they have a kingdom, mm-hmm. and the, the, uh, the one that's called out saying that they are believers, they have pulled away from his kingdom, and they're in the should be in the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. So where was you? Att- where was you attacked? What was you attack? You would attack who you have. They they okay? They're part of your organization, mm-hmm. or would you attack? The ones that are opposing you, and this in this case, that's the church. Now, Jesus said you had to take the kingdom back by force. Mm-hmm. You know, the, in the in the in the ministry, you should be. We as believers should be pursuing the people outside with sound doctrine, the kind of doctrine that the church was built on, on the the prophets, the uh, the prophets. And the apostles, mm-hmm. the foundation, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone, and not trying to, as, a, as we look at, not trying to mix the world ideas and world wisdom with the scriptures. Right, right, right. Well, you know, the the more you see what's coming against the kingdom, the more you have compassion to want to. You know, teach sound doctrine. Want to lead people to the Lord, mm-hmm. and 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 lead them in in a way where what they're hearing is is uh, sound doctrine as well. So we're gonna get into this. I'm gonna read these scriptures first, okay, and then. So our the title is what do you prefer, a sound doctrine teacher or an itch and ear teacher? The average person is going to say, well, 
I don't want to hear no itching ear, you know. <laughs> Uh, but you don't really know unless you know what an itching ear teacher is. Okay. All right. So let me read the scriptures. We're going to be coming from Second Timothy, Second um, Timothy chapter four, and also we're going to be coming from First Corinthians chapter two, verse mm, verse two and nine, and also Isaiah sixty four and four. Okay, so let me read and then we'll come from, go. We'll come back. So verse uh I'm gonna be reading the King James Version. So it starts with first uh it uh, verse one. I'm sorry. Okay, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead. At his appearing and his kingdom. Who is Paul talking to? He's talking to Timothy. He's talking to Timothy. Okay. I love what you said earlier about Paul was getting ready to leave. And that that it's in the scriptures. Yeah, exactly. He's getting ready same, to go. Same, same chapter. Now look at what's on his heart and mind. He getting ready to get up out of here. Yeah. Look what's on his heart and mind. Right? Look at what he's saying to this preacher, this pastor. That's right. Right? Okay, so the instructions that Paul gives to Timothy, the pastor, is instructions for all pastors. That's is that correct? That's right. Okay. He said, I charge you, therefore, let me get this out of the way. I got a pen in the way. He said, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. This is the charge that he's given him. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Preach the word. Preach it when it's convenient and when it's not convenient. Preach it when uh, people are listening and want to hear what you're saying and when they don't. Preach it when it's easy to preach it. Ain't nobody messing with you. Preach it when Folks are coming against you. Absolutely. He said, preach it in season and out of season when it's convenient and when it's not. Okay. Reprove, rebuke, hmm. exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Okay. I want to look at this real quick in um, the uh, Amplified. It says, Herald and preach the word. Keep your sense of urgency. Stand by it. Be at hand and ready. Whether the opportunity seems to be favorable or unfavorable. Mm -hmm. Okay. He said whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Whether it is welcomed or unwelcome. Those are the same things I was just saying. This is what. The Amplified Bible is saying, he said, uh, welcome or unwelcome, you as a preacher of the word are not to show people in what way their lives, wait, I didn't read that right, whether it's convenient or inconvenient, whether it is welcome or unwelcome, you as a preacher of the word are to show people in what way their lives are wrong. This is what, come on, yo, good okay. Lord. So, and convince them, rebuking and correcting, warning and urging and encouraging them. You're not encouraging them that, oh, you're okay, you're a sweetheart, Jesus loves you. and I, Yeah, and you're, you're, that you're, part too. You're. But you're encouraging them to keep going. You're encouraging them to live this life. Don't give up. Listen to what he's telling um uh, Timothy, That's right. right? He's encouraging Timothy. Hey, this ain't gonna always be easy. You're gonna have to do this whether you feel good or you don't, whether it's a good time or it's not. And he said, um, and convince them, rebuking and encouraging. That's one of the first things the people that have an itching ear want to get away from. That's the first thing. 
That's what they do not want to hear. The rebuking and the correcting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've not met so many. I've met so many people that if you correct them in something that they're doing, it's like you took a knife and cut them in half. Instead of them being able to say, yeah, you know, I I, 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 I need, I got to pray and, 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 and get the word in me to make changes, they get offended yeah. and get hurt and then now they're not talking to you anymore. They're not speaking to you. But you were not, cor listen, you were not correcting them. You were only saying what the word says Absolutely. and what God gave you. That's right. But that, 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 it's, this word is not a pacifier. Mm -mm. Uh, this, 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 word, this word cuts. It's a, it's a two-headed sword. It heals and it cuts. Mm. And it, it convicts. I mean, that word is... Uh, this, the, the, it, another part of that says, uh, he said, and convince them rebuking and correcting, warning and urging. Why am I using the word to warn you? What am I warning you about? He's going to explain this as we go down. What you should be aware of and what's going to happen. That's it. Warning and urging and encouraging them, being unflagging and unexhaustible in patience and teaching. In other words, you stick with sound doctrine. You stick with what I've given you, what I'm telling you to do. Don't give up. Don't give it. And the reason why I'm saying that is because as we read on, we're going to see what Paul is going to say to Timothy about what's coming. Go ahead. Uh, let me uh, see. See that what that I, I don't think we're going back this far, but I want to just go back a little bit. That's fine. Go where you uh, need to go. See. Now, Paul is still. This is the third chapter. He says to him because. We, we we don't want to go through nothing, mm -hmm. and, and 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 pastors and some of these they they they're not telling you what it actually you got to deal with mm -hmm. to stand on sound doctrine that that, that you're gonna may go through some persecution. But this is what Paul said. But you have, but you have carefully followed my doctrine, my manner of life. What verse is that, please? Verse 10 and verse uh, chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 10. But you okay. have carefully followed my doctrine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Man of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, love, perseverance, prosecution, and affliction, which happened to me at Antioch and Iconia mm -hmm. and Lascivious, and persecution I endured. And out of them all, the Lord delivered me. Yes. And all who desire to live godly is not going to get all this money mm -hmm, and all this mm -hmm, other blessing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But those who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow. Because they're going to be saying something else. Worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Mm -hmm. What was those scriptures? That was the first... That was a, that was a, that was a second, Timothy, second Timothy, three, Timothy, ten. chapter 10, I mean, chapter 3, verse 10 through uh, 13. 13. Wow. Okay. So can you read at least that last one again? But evil men mm -hmm. and imposters. Mm -hmm. Huh? And they they got they look like they're, they're preachers they're, 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 and pastors and mm -hmm, teachers mm -hmm. and apostles and evangelists. Mm -hmm. They look and sound like the real thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Will grow mm -hmm. worse and worse, mm -hmm. deceiving and being deceived. They grow worse and worse, deceiving. That don't mean they're gonna get more evil and evil. They're gonna get worse and worse. Deceiving, yeah, they're perfecting their craft. That's what they're going to be doing. Ah, that's gonna, word. Because it's 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 funny how some people they know what gets you hyped. They know what gets you on your feet, throwing your handkerchiefs and doing all. They know. Uh -huh. So when they see that, they realize, mm, this is what I was doing at that time that made them act like that. So I'm going to do more of that, and I'm going to get 
better at that. Because yeah. if that gets you up on your feet and get you running down to the altar and throwing money, that gets you uh, cash apping and 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 v vimoing and and pay PayPaling. You know, I I can say something to you right now because you all stirred up in this hyper faith. And I said, now if you want to see God continue to bless you like this, you need to put a seed. In the ground now. You need to put an offering in the ground now. You need to communicate to the man of God that 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 this word is feeding you. It's ble- well, you all stirred up and you all hyper. That's exactly what you're gonna do. That, that, boy, that is exactly what you're gonna do. It's a it's so like, like rehearsed thing. If I know how to get you there, so I'm gonna use. Well, I, I want to be careful. I was going to use, okay, I'm going to use this. All right. I feel like the Lord is okay with me using it. So, if I want to get you ready to be intimate or to have relations, I know what I need to do. And I'm speaking male, female. You know what needs to be done to prep that person to be able to get what it is that you want. Mm-hmm. Okay, if I just walk up to you and snatch you and force you, that's rape, mm-hmm. right? So this person don't want to be accused of rape, so they learn all the other ways to be able to get someone to give in and do what they want them to do, that's right? Mm-hmm. So if you think that these people don't know what they're doing, their intention may not have been to deceive you, but once they saw that you get hyped and you ready to give, yeah, they can perfect their craft. Yeah. This is what Paul said it, with this word uh, unflagging. And, and, and this is a, a word that I've never really heard before. In the Amplified Bible, it says, being unflagging and unexhaustible in patience and teaching. The word unflagging means to be tireless and persistent. So just like these fake and false teachers are out there and they're persistent in what they're doing. And we got to be the same way, whether people want to hear us or not, whether they want to listen to what we're saying, we have got to be equally as persistent. All right. This is what Paul told Timothy. Uh, Yeah, yeah, sir. He said, be persistent. Don't give up. Be inexhaustible. Don't mean don't go get tired and then want to give in because Folks don't want to hear you, but let's go on. He said, um, verse 3 says, for the time is coming. Oh, for the time is coming, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. But after their own lust shall heap, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Let me read this and amplify it. For the time is coming when people will not tolerate, endure sound and wholesome instructions, but having ears itching for something pleasing and gratifying, they will gather to themselves one teacher after another. Hear that, Jackie. Mm -hmm. One teacher after another to, to a considerable number Choosing to satisfy their own liking and to foster the errors that they hold. Hmm. I'm telling you. There is a difference between someone who craves or desires or want to hear sound doctrine versus someone who wants to just hear something that uh, makes them feel good and got them jumping around and hollering and, and carrying on. Listen, sound doctrine, that I, I, I kind of sound doctrine that, that, that desire for it that comes from within is you wanting to know what, if the person is preaching from the scriptures, what is God saying through the scripture? What is the writer of the saying, the, the 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 scripture? What is that writer saying? What is the intent? Like when before I married you, 
All I knew was stay in the word. That was all I knew. And although I read all over the place in the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, I read all over the place. I had never been, never ever sat down and took one book at a time and learning who the writer is, who they're writing to, what they're talking about, what this scripture is about. I had never experienced that before. So what that does is that leads you to preaching what you think the scripture is saying because you understand the words. But that is not how you preach. You have to understand what the biblical writer is saying to the people he was talking to at that time, during that time. Like right now, the scripture that we're reading. This is a person who set up under Paul. Mm -hmm. This is a person who learned from Paul, oh, and gleaned from Paul, a son. He was a son, right, in the ministry. And so, you know, he's telling uh, Timothy things that's going to come. And he's preparing him as a minister, as a leader, to be able to endure this and to remain oh. sound in his Ooh. doctrine. Because when people stop wanting to hear the sound doctrine, but you see other people preaching and they just preaching fluff and gunk and stuff. But yet they got all of these followers and all of these people listening to them and sowing into them. You know, it makes you kind of feel like, well, maybe I need to change up what I'm doing or maybe I need to change up. But then you look into the lives of the people that's preaching and teaching this stuff. Their lives are all over the place. That's right. They're preaching stuff that's not sound. So that tells you they don't have any soundness in them. Mm -hmm. They're not living according to God's word. They're not living out what the biblical writers are saying. They have just strung together a bunch of scriptures or a passage or a story. And out of that story, they make that story say something that 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 is 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 culturally relevant to what they're trying to communicate to you but it has nothing to do with what the actual text is saying Woo! but yeah. now they they got you all stirred up and fluffed up and then they say well this word this is the hebrew word or the greek word see because they know how to tap in they know how to deal with christians as long as i say oh this is the greek and the hebrew here I got you. But I, what I'm talking about has nothing to do with Greek or Hebrew culture at all. Oh. I just threw that in there to make you think this is sound and this is good. But the whole thing I'm talking about has nothing at all. When you hear the message and you listen to the message, has nothing at all to do with the actual text, what the writer is talking about. <laughs> I, I couldn't understand, um, Jackie, I could not understand why is it some people can hear these great messages and this, you know, and they're hyped and they're excited. Then they send them to me and I can't even get past the first little things they're saying because in my mind, all I can hear is they ain't saying nothing. <laughs> They're not saying anything. But if you have a desire for sound doctrine, that's not going to do anything mm -hmm. for you at all. It's not going to. Let me go ahead and, 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 and let me be transparent here. <laughs> I, I, I believe that you are a. Um, you are in to and teach sound doctrine. You you rarely ever get into uh, stories or, or things like that. You mainly stick to what the scripture says and what Paul said and who he was talking to and all of that. Well, when I came into your life and realized that's how you teach and that's how you, you know, it made me start wanting what you had. I started wanting mm -hmm. to know 
what the book was about, what the writer was talking about. Like I would say something in the beginning of our marriage, I would say something and you would you would be ever so kind and so sweet when you would say, well, now what Paul was talking about is this and that. But I thought what I was talking about was good. It made <laughs> sense. It was relevant to the culture and all of that. But you were like, well, not, now that's not what he means by that. This is what he's talking about. And just like you just did, let's go back some. Yeah, we're reading uh, 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4. But let's go back to chapter 3 so we can set a foundation of what Paul is saying and how he's prepping Timothy. So this is the kind of thing that I've been sitting under. And to the point where I pray, I say, God, just teach me your word. Because I don't want to be drawn away or caught up in this, 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 this itching ear. If I could say itching ear gospel, because they thinking they're giving you good news for your life. This is what you got to do to bring in the funds. This is what you got to do to get that <laughs> house. This is what you got to do to get that car. Let me just stop for a minute. Because uh, on the, uh, on the, uh, what I, put in that we were going to be talking about. I said I was going to give two examples of this kind of stuff. So I want to give one of the examples right now. Okay. One of the examples is this scripture right here. Uh, let me go here. And we're coming back to Timothy. We're coming back. Right? Wait, 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 wait. So I'm going to go to Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. And I'm only going to read that scripture. I'm going to pick your brain in just a minute. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to read this scripture, Jeremiah 29 and 11. And this is what it says. For I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts and plans for welfare and peace and not for evil to give you hope in your final outcome that's the amplified the king james says for i know the thoughts that i think towards you said the lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end now we often hear that scripture we've heard it preached and you know it was like god he knows you know what he has planned for you in the future and you know so we get all hyped up and excited about that and you know just really feeling real good and everything and it's you're feeling really satisfied can you tell us really <laughs> what that scripture is talking about well uh it's a letter jeremiah wrote in, in his book in his writing uh, to the children of Israel that was in captivity in Babylon, mm -hmm. which is the tribe of Judah. Mm -hmm. And God has spoke to Daniel, I mean, that spoke to Jeremiah that uh, in Israel would be, uh, well, Judah would be in captivity for 70 years. Mm -hmm. Now, we found some false prophets saying that that wasn't so. Mm -hmm. Just like, just, like, just like we have false prophets today saying, well, no, that's not what he's saying in this particular passage of Scripture. Yeah, we can. God has got a future for us. And they're, they're prophesying that. Mm -hmm. So there was there was false prophets saying, oh, we're not going to be there 70 years. We, we're going, this was going to happen. And God said, I didn't send them. But it was actually for the children of Israel that, yes, what you, you're going to be in captivity. For 70 years. Mm -hmm. So while you're there, go ahead on, marry, give your kids a marry, and prosper, have children. Because basically, when I bring you out, you're going to have more coming out than when you went in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so he said, look, basically, that's that's the plan. He said, yes, you're going to hear, but I have a plan for you to, get, to bring you back to your homeland, to bring you back to Israel. Mm -hmm. My plan is that not only after the 70 years, is to bring you back to your homeland in Israel. Mm, okay. And, that, so, and Daniel was was seeking the Lord mm -hmm. to find out how long we're going to be in captivity. And then God showed him, revealed to him, 
how long he was going to be in captivity and when he was going to come out of captivity. But Daniel never did. Daniel didn't. He, now, Daniel didn't receive whatever plan God had for him. He died in, 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 in the Mule Persia. Wow. Wow. So, this is the difference, guys. This is one example. This particular scripture has been taken out of context so many times. And it's been made to um, say that, to ignore that uh, God was, uh, that Jeremiah was talking about the children of Israel and things like that. So does that mean that God does not have a plan for uh, our future? Our plan is already being worked out. The plan was for us to be saved, for us to be reconciled back to God, for us to be put back in right standing with him, to walk upright before him, walk humbly before him. You know, that was the plan that God had for us as Gentiles. The plan was for us to be engrafted in. The plan was never to give us all these material goods That's right. and to give us riches and fame and fortune and to make our name great, put it in lights and all that. There are many faithful Christians that have came and lived and lived for God. Nobody ever even knew them, but they were faithful. Yeah. They were in sound doctrine. Didn't have a whole didn't lot. Didn't have a whole lot. There are people, you see, if that scripture, the way it's being used was true, then all of these faithful believers in Africa and in and, and, and Asia and India and, and, and Australia and all of these different places, we should see many, 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 many rich Good. Believers, we should see many believers that have a lot of material good. See, that's what that that scripture is being used to communicate that you know God got this plan to give you all of this stuff. The plan was for us to be restored back to Him. Yes. That's the plan. Okay, so. All right, so what happens is somebody preaches that message, and so now you're living your life. Well, God, you said that you got a plan for me and a plan for peace, and that you're gonna do this, and you're gonna. So now you're talking to God as if that's what He said directly to you. But if you read what was said and you read it in context, just as uh, Jackie gave us the the insight, then you will understand what that actually means. And he says here, uh, for for thus for thus saith the Lord of hosts, mm -hmm. the God of Israel, do not let the prophets or the divination who are in your midst deceive you mm. or, or nor listen to your dream or listen uh, no, nor listen to your dreams which you caused cause you to dream. Mm -hmm. In other words, you listen to these guys and you got a different dream for life. Mm -hmm. Because somebody else has done interpreted the scripture wrong and now you're dreaming about something that's really not for, for you, uh, that God has for you. It says... But what's the scriptures you're reading at? And this, that's in verse 8. Verse 8? Of Jeremiah 29. Okay. For they prophesy falsely to you by my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. But thus saith the Lord, after 70 years are complete in Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you and cause you to return to this place, Israel. Mm -hmm. That's the plan. I mean, that, and God, God said, I got my plan for you. It's to bring you back to your homeland. Well, you know what? Can I let me go back real quick? This is wow. In verse. I'm going to do verse eight and verse nine again. He said, "For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel: Let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you. Neither hearken to your dreams, which you cause to be dreamed." The False prophets and diviners 
that were among the children of Israel were deceiving them or trying to with false pro with false uh, prophecies and divining, you know, trying to know the future by doing stuff. But it says that they caused their dreams to be dreamed. In other words, these dreams did not come from the Lord. For your for they prophesied falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. Well, listen. In my name. He said it prophesied in my name. So something about that prophecy connects to the Lord. Isn't that what we're seeing today? We're hearing people prophesy and they're saying all kinds of things. And what they do is they throw scripture on top of that. Mm -hmm. They say, the Lord showed me a dream. They say, this is what the Lord says. These things do not come to pass. They do not happen. And these people go on. We have seen that. And nobody said anything. None of the people that could have held these false prophets uh, accountable and shut it down, didn't no, nobody say anything. Nobody said so it. now they're going on and they're still mm -hmm. prophesying. Well, that's what he's saying. In the midst of y'all, Jeremiah, you got these false prophets and diviners and dreamers and all of this stuff. Don't be fooled and don't be deceived by this stuff. Mm -hmm. I thank God that he gave us the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because if without the Holy Spirit, it would be so easy for us to be deceived, to be tricked. Because for you to know what a person is preaching is wrong, you need to know the word. But if you're young and you don't know the word, how then do you know what they're teaching is is? Uh, if their teaching is wrong, the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, He He will put something, a check in your spirit. I don't know for a lack of words, you know, He'll put a check in your spirit, something, and you will know. Mm, this ain't right. It don't feel right, or or I can't listen to them. I can't, you know, I I, I don't hear God. But here's the thing. But if you got this thing inside of you where you want to be rich, you want to be known, you want to have this and have that and do this and do that, you're going to listen to them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hook, line, and sinker. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and you look at the population of the people that's uh, saying stuff like that is expanding. And the ones that are still preaching... Uh, following the doctrine of the apostles, they are, they are not many. They are not many. But they, but it says uh, false teachers and, and, and apostles will grow worse and They will increase. They, they will increase the more. Well, if you look at what uh, when you look at what Paul was saying to Timothy, he was basically letting him know that's what's up. But you got to stay the course. You got to stay the course. Let me go on back to um, Timothy. <laughs> yeah. He basically saying, you know, you got to you gotta stick to this. Verse 3, I'm going to read it again. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. I like how the... How the uh, Amplified said, one teacher after another. Oh, yeah. One yeah. after another. Yeah. So you're going from teacher to teacher looking for and listening for somebody to say stuff that's going to make you feel good, that's going to tickle your ear. And not only that, when you read like that, the first thing I, I, I see is that teacher after teacher after teacher. It's going to be saying the same thing. Mm. It's going to be expanding. All these teachers are going to be saying the same thing. Not, not necessarily you going from one to another, which would, would happen, but it's teachers teachers, and teachers will be saying the same saying thing. Saying the same. Well, yeah. yeah. If uh, I see what's working for you, what's bringing in the money, Ooh. I'm just being real. If I see what's, what's bringing in the money and I see what's working for you and what's elevating you, 
And Why would I not do the same thing if I want what you have? And see, now, now, and so also, my, my. Also, yeah, and, and some people come over and they'll follow that person and let that person mentor them or listen to what they're saying and say, like, I'm on, I'm on, I'm going to duplicate my ministry after this particular mm -hmm. person's ministry because look at that, all this growth. So you're looking at the outward appearance of growth, but you're not listening to the spiritual side because you got numbers. But you got no quality of believing and of the conviction of the word. You just got a, a, a quantity, but not quality mm -hmm. of faith. Mm -hmm. Oh, my. I love what you said earlier about, you know, when you're following this type of teaching and you don't have any real soundness in you. But when life hit, regular life hit, none of that stuff that you was taught going to be able to help you. It's no not going to do only the soundness of the word of God, you know, yeah. because the way a lot of them teach is that God didn't call you to suffer. God called you to have money. God called, well, the scriptures do not bear that out. And you can't, He says it's better to suffer for the word than to suffer for things that you've done wrong. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So I said that to say He's letting you know you're going to suffer. Yeah, exactly. You're going to suffer for to stay in yeah, truth yeah, in yeah. truth and in the word of God. Yeah. Mm. Verse 4 says, and they shall turn away their ears. Now, this is what itching ears is. This is what that means. It says, they, will, they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Right? Mm -hmm. You're going to be listening to stuff that's not even real. It's not even true. Right? The Amplified says, and will turn aside from hearing the truth and wander off into myths, myths and man-made fiction. So you got all these messages that's been put together. This all this man-made yes, man -made ideas. ideas and 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 things put together. Listen, I put a link. Be filled with void. I put a link in the ch in the comment section, the chat section, and I know this link could probably infuriate some people or make you mad. But this link that I put is a YouTube video. It is a great example of the difference between sound doctrine and itch and ear doctrine. It's a great example of showing you how one can grab scriptures and use them in a way to make you think that they're saying something. And the thing that they're using it to say has nothing at all to do with the text, with the what the actual word is saying. This is the difference. But this is the sleight of hand. Because when you don't know what the scriptures are actually saying and someone says something like that and it sounds Sound good, good and it's like, yes, this is what I've been looking for. God is speaking to me. But you don't know what the text is actually saying. So, but he said they're going to be drawn away. Turn, They're going to turn away from hearing the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch you, Timothy, in Woo! all things, endure afflictions, do the work of evangelists, make full proof of thy ministry. I'm going to go back to the Amplified because it just kind of brings a little bit more of this out. As for you, be calm and cool and steady. <laughs> Accept and suffer unflinchingly every hardship do the work of an evangelist fully perform all the duties of your ministry now listen oh, to the kind of stuff paul is saying to timothy he's not telling timothy to build no name he's not telling timothy get your ministry out there he's not telling timothy you know god want to bless you financially he wants to make your name great he wants he this is not the kind of stuff he's telling him he's telling him things like prepare yourself you know when the suffering come or you start going through hang in there yes 
Hang in there. Don't give up. Because it's going to come for the word's sake. But if you just talking some of the way these uh, preachers, no, no, nobody gonna come and challenge you. Uh, as far as you got to stop preaching what you're preaching, the enemy like that. They like for you to when you start preaching uh, 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 what Tim, what Paul was telling Timothy. You know, you got to deal with these false prophets because they're coming in and they don't they they are gonna deceive you, try to deceive the people. But you got to stand up against them. Don't let them intimidate you, Timothy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because you're youth. Mm -hmm. You might be young, but you've been anointed That's right. to proclaim the gospel. So you don't buy down to them. Mm -hmm. You don't you still love and you do right and show forth the example. You know, that here's the thing. This is so interesting to me. And this is because of what you just said. I would see some of the preachers, some that that I would actually listen to. Um uh, MacArthur, even though he's Calvinist, and Bachman, and uh, Peters, and uh, Piper, <laughs> Peter Piper. <laughs> They're two different people. Last name Peter and last name Piper. But and and their their teaching is just sound. It doesn't it's come something. with no fluff or any of that. It's just sound teaching. It doesn't get you running down the aisle or screaming or it doesn't do anything like that. But when they deal with things, what people are saying and doing in scriptures that is contrary to the word, they call it out. Yeah. They call it out and they call out what was said and they call out who said it and how that is not in line with the scriptures and they can show you through the scriptures what they're saying. It's up to you to go back and read those scriptures to see if it be so. Mm -hmm. That's what the Bereans did. It's like, I hear you. I like what you're saying, but I, I need to go. I'm Mrs. Uh, Lori talking. <laughs> I need to go back into the scriptures to see if what you're saying exactly. is in line yeah. with the word. Yeah. Right? But sometimes I will feel like, oh, why would they do that? Why would they call their names out? You know, I would feel a little embarrassed or whatever. I say, why would they do that? Well, isn't that what you're just saying about uh, Timothy? Don't yeah. be afraid of them. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> don't, don't be afraid to, to call this out or, you know, to deal with this. Because if you don't tell the people that are sitting up under you, if you don't tell them, the truth, and they get swept away into this madness, you know. If, then, if, if the word that you, if the word that you preaching, or anybody is preaching, if it does not do this, you need to check it. And that from childhood, and you have known the Holy Scriptures, mm -hmm. which is able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scriptures is given by inspiration of God. And it what for profitable for doctrine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For reproof. Mm -hmm. The scripture reproof reproof. Mm -hmm. And then proof reading this makes sure you correct that this correct your error or whatever you error in. And correction for instruction in righteousness. Not instruction on getting rich. Instruction mm -hmm. in righteousness. And that just but it's saying it makes you wise unto to salvation. Yes. Mm. Make so not wise in how to get out here and and and, and uh, know how to get people and and get them following you and get them uh, blessing you financially. That's not it. No. That's not it. Mm. All right. So let me let me do this one real quick. Uh, okay. The word reproof. I wanted to look that one up. I didn't get to that one. Uh, let's see here. All right. All right. So the word reproof in Greek, it means to, it teaches you, I mean, the word rebukes. Okay. It admonishes. It. <laughs> It says criticizes, but we know that reprehends, rebuke, says rebuke. In other words, the word will get on you and show you where you're really located at. Uh, yeah. That's yeah, what yeah. the word will do. The word is not designed to just 
make you feel good and make you feel happy and make you run around. No, the word will bring joy. When you find out you've been set free, when you find out that, you know, in Christ, there is no condemnation to them that walk up, that walk, that are led by the spirit. Yeah. Romans 8. Romans 8, 8 right, yeah. right. There is no condemnation to them that yeah. are. Let me pull yeah. that up. It's in, it's eight, yeah. I know yeah. the scripture I'm saying, but I'm not even completing it. That's what I want to do right now. But that's that we have no condemnation in the Lord. But see, sometimes when people read that scripture, they just stop. It doesn't say there is no condemnation in the Lord, and that's it. It also says, <laughs> let me get it because that way, okay, here we go right here. All right. There is, therefore, come on, Romans 8, where are you? Here we go. Got it. Let me read this. It says, there is, therefore, for this reason, and the, for this reason is what was said in verse 7, there is, therefore, now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. It doesn't stop right there. Ooh. It says, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So is that saying that if you are in Christ, but walking after the flesh, there's condemnation? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that, yeah. And that's it. But that walking is living. Living. Yeah. Right. Living. So... Did I, don't, did I finish? I don't think I finished. But we were talking about, you were talking about what the word should do. Oh, yes. The word should make you wise unto salvation, right? This, the word is just not designed to make you somebody, mm -hmm. you know, this person that you want to be. That's not what the word, the word yes. is designed to make you live right in Christ, be the person in Christ Amen. that you should be. Not this other, a better version of yourself. You was in the world and you was jacked up, but the word going to make you a better version Amen. of yourself and you still going to be doing some of the same stuff. That's not it. If the scripture also says if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. So you just taking, you know, well, I'm a new creature in Christ, but the only thing new about you is that you don't do these outward things anymore, but you still have the same lust and the same desires. You still want money. You still want fame. You still want fortune. It was the same way you was in the world. You was a hustler in the world. But now you a hustler don't that don't cuss. I'm telling you, if you if you and if you're not careful, careful, if you listen to that kind of uh, teaching, uh, teaching that kind of teaching, when you start preaching, you're gonna preach the same kind of preaching. Exactly. You, you, you're just gonna uh, continue that with that kind of message. That's gonna be your message, and you're gonna be still do the same thing mm. because you, you your results is. But you, you want that result that the other person is getting. Exactly. Well, I'm going to be honest. This is something I have been praying. I was like, God, just just teach me your word. Because I didn't have a, I didn't have a solid foundation of, um, uh, what is it, homeneutics and homiletics. I didn't have a foundation like that where someone was just sitting down teaching the word of God from the from the um, context of what Paul was saying, what Peter was talking about, the culture. You know, I didn't have no beginning like that. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand that. I just had a beginning where you just read the Bible. And then, you know, whatever the subject is that you're talking about, use scriptures that talk about that subject. It wasn't about you fully understanding what the writer was talking about. That's been recent for me. So I have messages out there where I preached or taught something without fully understanding what the uh, person was actually saying, you know. But because now I'm, I'm, I'm I have such a hunger and, and desire to know yeah. those things, 
you know, God is, he's, he's given me, you know, full context of things and, and even learning who the, the writers are. You know, you, you reading scriptures, but you have no idea. You don't know anything about the writer, you know. Does that matter? Absolutely. No idea. You know, if you reading, I don't read nothing about Harry Potter or nothing like that. But the lady that writes those books, she has a full-on history, life, everything. She's not just writing about Harry Potter. She is into some of this stuff that she's writing about. And I just ran across that years ago, you know, but it's a good example of, you know, knowing what we know about Paul is if we don't know nothing else, this man was sold out. Oh, yeah. For the Lord. He was sold out. Well, we only know that through what the scripture says, but some of these preachers now, they're all over social media. They're all in the, where you can find them. You can find out about their lifestyle. You can find, because they're flamboyant and they're putting themselves out there. They're letting you see. They don't care what you think about what they're preaching or teaching. They know what they're getting out of it. So they don't mind putting it out there. You can critique them. You can say what you want to because you ain't touching their pockets. No, you're not touching their pockets. And, and uh, yeah, and, and, and they send it to the signal to the uh, generation of people that's saying, ooh, you can have all that and still be saved. Mm -hmm. And you can still do this and do that. Mm -hmm. So you send it a send it a, send it a wrong kind of message, actually. Well, the message is that follow me. Mm -hmm. Paul didn't say follow me and that was it. He said, follow me as I follow Christ. Mm -hmm. So, but the, these things that's happening, these people are saying, follow me. Come to my conference. Come to this. And folks running here and there. And then I think in Matthew 24, we were told not to do that. Oh, yeah. You hear that? Oh, yeah. That's right. We were told not to do that. And I'm, I'm, yeah, I guess I'm on that old persuasion. And uh, I, that's, 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 uh, that's something. I'm going to finish this up, uh, verses 6 and 7, and then I'll stop right there. This is what uh, Paul was saying in verse 6. He said, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Mm. Mm -hmm. Verse 7 says, I fought a good fight. I have finished whose course? My course. My course. I have kept the faith. So this whole thing, guys, is ultimately this sound doctrine, this, this um, you know, just being in sync with God and being on track with God is so that you will have biblical faith. Biblical faith is the type of faith that will keep you. This kind of uh, stirred up, itching ear, you know, feel good faith and all that stuff, that stuff will let you down in a crisis. It will let you down. When Paul said he kept the faith, he did this thing according to what the word of God. Never ever professing to be perfect because he kept telling his testimony of how jacked up he was before Christ. So he never was coming off like he was a perfect person. And he let you know, hey, when Peter came and he wasn't walking up right before the Lord, I rebuked him. So he let you know. He let you know he came, you know, and he would deal with some stuff. But he said, I kept the faith. Our faith rooted and grounded in the Lord Jesus Christ is the only solid faith that you can have. But if you put faith in these uh, charlatans, you put faith in these sleight of hand teachings and all of that, that kind of faith there will let you down. It'll, yeah, it'll let you down. Because trials, trials and tribulations come, and you're not prepared for them, what are you going to do? That fame and fortune and other stuff that they, they've been sharing share with you, that's not going to cause you to stand. You need some sound doctrine to be able well, to stand on. And then the money thing, it gets even worse because let's say you get out there and you get a taste for, you know, getting this money and, and doing all of this stuff. Now you got to keep it up. Mm -hmm. You always say that. You got to keep it up. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. I ain't get much, but she, uh, he said, you know, uh, but you, but 
you be watchful mm -hmm. in all things. Okay, you endure affliction. Okay, and do the work of an evangelist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No doubt, evangelists back then was that wasn't no joke. Mm. Well, I tell you what, we had a little song ringing right there. But, uh, yeah, so he gave them instructions as a preacher what he should be doing. And uh, the word watch, he said, but watch. Let me go here. This is uh, going back to four. Is that four? Uh, yeah, uh, five. Oh, it's five. Okay. As for you, oh, okay. Yeah, the, the amplifier is a little different. As for you, be calm and cool and steady. Accept and suffer unflinchingly every hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Fully perform at the, pretty, fully perform all the duties of your ministry. Every time I read that, I think of what he's telling him. He's not, he doesn't, nowhere in scripture do you see Paul giving anybody instructions on um, becoming these people, you know, that got this and got that and, you know, and all yeah. of this stuff that you see the church, not not, not the whole church, but you see a lot of uh, believers getting into this stuff is worldly and they don't realize that. When I say worldly, I'm saying of the world. Mm -hmm. The Lord said there's nothing in the nothing in the world but the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. These these ideals and desires and hungers for this stuff, it comes from these three places. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. So you're seeing more and more believers being pulled into this. Like, you know, not being satisfied just to live for and serve the Lord, but just wanting something about themselves, you know, wanting to be on a major platform. I, I don't think like that. And and I had this before I became a, a believer, but I probably better understand it now. When I was young, I when in high school, I kept saying I didn't want to be in the limelight because that's a that's a high price to pay to be in the limelight. Now I wasn't saved, so the only thing I knew about the limelight was people that were actors or singers or you know things like that. And all I could think about is like. When you get up that high, everything about you is exposed. Everybody can see. You took the word that I was saying, thinking the higher you go up on the flagpole, mm -hmm. the more you're behind it out. Yeah. And that's what you say, the more you're exposed. Yeah, the more you are exposed. So wanting to <laughs> wanting to be out in front of everybody has never been a desire of mine because um, you know, it, that's a that's a that's a lot of responsibility, right? Now I know some people are like, well, you know, God called me to this, and God called me that. Anything God called you to, He's gonna protect you. Yeah. Anything God called you to, He's going to. He it will be Him. It won't be you. It will be Him. But a lot of people that we're seeing that's out there and out in the forefront, there's not God. These people just were charismatic enough to be able to learn how to do stuff. Now, what would I do if God called me to the forefront for whatever reason? You know, my prayer is that I would remain the same and, and constantly seek him for him to yeah. preserve me and keep me. Because look here, don't think that we or I don't know I don't want to speak for Jackie, but I, he, I've heard his testimony, so I know. Don't think that you can't get pulled into this kind of stuff. When you start making millions of dollars preaching the gospel, come on now. You, you, you're making millions of dollars in your own personal account of preaching the gospel, free to give, free to receive. Uh, I, something is really wrong with that. that it's a, you can really get in the wrong ballpark there. 
I, and I don't have against nothing against money, but there are so many people out, even in ministry, there's people giving and they're not getting. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they're hurting. But they're being told, you know, stay in there, hang in there, keep your seeds because your time is coming. Yeah. And God just wants them to live safe. Well, yeah. He just wants them to live a biblical life and trust him to supply the needs. Trust him to, you know, because it's little simple things like you may be working and you may get a promotion on your job. Being satisfied and happy with that. Or you know. Yeah, I wonder what would happen if God spoke to Donald Hudson that could be the rich man. Give all you have to the poor. I wonder what that I wonder what those rich pastors and preachers that would say. Uh, well, no, I, I wonder what they would say if God really pumped their hearts. Probably doing the same thing because why would he put that story in the Bible? To show that when you got so much money and your life is tied up in things and material goods, it's not easy to walk away from that. And he showed us what did that man do? And, and he, he walked away grieved. And he said, All these things I've done since uh, my youth, I've kept all the commandments. In other words, I, I'm in the church and I did all these things I'm doing. But Jesus said, one thing that I like it. One thing. You know, show, show your, your love. What, what do you love now? What do you love? Do you love me and your neighbor? Or do you love what you have? Mm. I mean, if you think about it in your, in your, just in your natural thinking right now, if you think about having millions of dollars, Millions of dollars. You can go where you want, buy what you want, you live comfortably, you can have the latest, you can do the, all of this. You have access to everything because you have money. Use your imagination. And somebody who you say you love and you love them more than life and all of this says, give that up. Give it all up. Do you think it would be easy? No. No, absolutely so for me, the way I think is I don't want to be in that position mm -hmm. because I think that that could happen to anybody. Mm -hmm. I think that anybody could be in a position where you got all of this stuff and, you know, you don't want to give it up. Well, I mean, compared to a lot of people, people in our category and a lot of friends we have, uh, we would be considered rich. Mm. We would be considered rich. Oh, yeah. You know, not yeah. just people that have millions. And and sometimes mm. even I've caught myself not wanting to just getting frustrated with getting. Just <laughs> just getting frustrated, feeling like people taking advantage of me or they think I'm an ATM machine and you know, but I think just throughout Scripture, we're commanded to help the poor. We're commanded mm -hmm. to help people that are in need. Oh, yeah. yeah you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. it doesn't mean that you got to give to every single body that comes by you with their hands out because some people won't work. Okay. They don't want to work. They don't want to put in the work or the effort mm -hmm. to uh, take care of themselves. So they would rather spend their time begging and then go around the car and get in their Mercedes and drive <laughs> off. We saw that in the news. Yeah. You know, but. This was not, well, most of our messages are not run around jump messages, but these are transformational messages. This yeah. message right here, you know, it is not easy to move away from desiring something to tickle your fancy. It's not easy to move away from just wanting to hear messages that make you feel good and get you hyped. Because that's what happens. You feel good. You feel hyped. You feel like, oh, yeah, if I'm good, get ready to happen. Yeah. But sound messages educate you and give you knowledge of God and give you understanding of God. And they transform your life and make you more solid and not running around, you know, wanting to hear something. Got to hear the ladies. Got to get the ladies. Got, I'm listening to these CDs and I'm just, them. Oh, you know. When I first got saved. I didn't know any better. That's when, if somebody invited me to go, yeah, I would go. I would go because I didn't know any better. But now I, I don't have that desire to go just hear somebody 
preach or teach. I love sitting down studying the word and then God giving me revelations. And it's like, mm -hmm. oh, this is so awesome. Does that mean you don't go to a lecture or go, don't go to a, uh, a, 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 you know, a teaching? Am I saying that? Absolutely mm -hmm. not. Absolutely not. But if you're going because you just want to hear something good and you want to feel good and you want to get that hype, that church music that they got, and ooh, those conferences are a fire, they're the bomb. And you just feeling so good, just running around, running around, you feeling so good. But then when that's over, oh. what then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You come the back, you, when, yeah, you come back, yeah, yeah. When you come back from that one and you face with some trials and tribulation. What you going? What you going to do then? You know. Well, uh, I'm not certain who the segment of people that God has listening to this message, but listen, you are not alone, right? But here's a prayer, a prayer, a simple prayer, and this is a prayer that I pray. I say, God, teach me Your Word, teach me Your Word. So. With that hunger and that desire, he said, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, mm. being in right standing with God, you know. He said, hey, it, you shall be filled. So if you're hungering after, you know, the truth, hun hungering after uh, real knowledge of God and knowledge of his word, God will answer you. And you don't have to worry about being tricked or deceived because when you're sincere, you're praying. I'm going to tell you, a charlatan can come your way, and, and and I'll give you my experience. My experience is I heard them talking, but I couldn't hear them saying anything. Or my experience was they were saying stuff, and maybe it kind of sounded good, but I couldn't retain it. I couldn't keep it. Now that I'm where I am, I'm more mature in the Lord. I look back, and um, I remember... Uh, 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 this lady coming by and doing a Bible study with me, and uh, I could not retain or grasp anything she was saying, only to look back at that now and realize that's because it was not the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's why. Only one lady that I can remember that was talking to me about uh, the Lord before I was saved, and it was um, a Caucasian lady in Oxford, Alabama. When that lady, and she was not jumping around, screaming or hollering, trying to get no money. She wasn't trying to do that. She was just sharing the gospel with me. And as she did that, I felt like, I felt conviction. I felt like I want to stop smoking. I want to stop doing bad stuff. Now, it was on me that I was thinking like that, that mm -hmm. I wanted to stop and this and wow. And I couldn't do that. I couldn't stop it myself. But I just remember her sharing the gospel with me, you know, and praying with me. But all the other people, the Jehovah Witnesses, the, the Jehovah Witnesses, and, you know, people coming over and they're talking to you. I couldn't keep any mm. of that. And another Praise thing, if, amen, That's if you're message. listening to someone and you just can't quite get or grasp what they're saying and you can't, it sounds like they're not saying anything, that means you need to move away from that. Mm -hmm. Because when God is speaking to you, he said, my sheep know my voice. And a stranger, they will not follow. That's a promise. Amen. So, you know, just be okay with trusting God that he will teach you his word and show you the way to go. So, all right. We thank you guys for tuning in today. That's a just, good word. Thank you. Just uh, listening to us talk about today sound teachers versus itching ear teachers. Mm -hmm. There is a big difference. One of them will leave you in right standing with God in a solid, sound relationship with God. And one will just keep you in hyper faith. And you're constantly having to go back for more, constantly having to go back for more. And always remember this, hyper-faith teachers are not doing it just to be doing it. You got to get so. <laughs> they, they, they will expect that you're going to sow a seed, that you're going to give some money, that you're going to put something in the ground. You're going to do something because if you don't, then they're going to talk about how you're coming in and you're listening and you're getting fed and getting all this stuff, but you ain't doing that. Mm -hmm. So now you're on a guilt trip.
because you taking advantage. And the average person gonna do what? They go give. Yeah. Right? God never does that to us. Yeah. He never does that to us. He fills us up with love, and that love and that compassion makes you wanna give. Right? So uh, would you like to close out in prayer? Because I did most of the talking today. Well, you did. Is all right. Right. Praise God. Father, we just want to say thank you for the word today. Thank you for the uh, the blessing that you bestowed upon us, Lord God. Lord, help us to rightly divide the word of truth, Lord. Praise God. And we ask the listeners out there, God, to look at the word of God as a lamp unto their feet and a light into their path. Even as David said, that word, if I hid it in my heart, that I might not sin against you. God, we know the word is a sharp and a two-edged sword. It is the sword of the Spirit, mm. oh God, and that, and that is the unadulterated word the, that the apostles wrote. Nothing what's going on now is able to fight off the enemy. It's the word of God that's going to be able to defeat thy foe. So, Lord, we have pray, oh God, that as we look at the word of God and study that you, uh, uh, as, as the Holy Spirit, will give the readers clear understanding as they begin to look at the word of God uh, for themselves and not having uh, teachers seeking of the teachers with each and ears to tell them what they want to hear or but tell them oh God the truth of the word and that's the truth of the gospel and we all want to thank you and praise you in Jesus name amen amen awesome all right guys enjoy the rest of your day and we will see you Lord say the same we will see you uh, Wednesday, 7 p.m., and Thursday at 12 p.m. God bless you all, and have a great day.